Hello everyone, this is Aaron Johnson with the Johnson Eye Racing Team. I'm coming to you today from South Boston Speedway. Uh, this South Boston is this week's track in the Eye Racing Legends Car Series. This is week number four. It's the week of January 4th. And because I had a, a really good response to the video I made showing my driving line at USA International, I thought I'd do the same thing today at South Boston. I'll be driving the New Holland Equipment Double Zero car for this video. What I thought I'd do is I thought I'd show you my line complete with turn in points uh, and with with where I get on and off the throttle. I'll show you some quick lines. I think a really quick lap here is anything under about 16.45. That should make you very competitive in most every split. If you want to run up front in the top split, you're going to need to get down into the 16 threes. But I think this line can help you do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the driving line back on for the purposes of this video. And we'll start out just by watching uh, on TV1, we'll watch a full lap at South Boston. So South Boston's a lot like any of the other tracks in iRacing. You want to get up against the wall and then turn down into the corner and put two wheels onto that yellow line. If you can hug that yellow line through the corner, build yourself a setup that's going to allow you to do that, uh, you can be pretty quick. All right, so again, down into the corner, hug the yellow line, up against the wall, and out. A couple things to worry about here at South Boston. When you come out of turn two and you come out of turn four, there are bumps in the corners. And those bumps, if you hit them at the wrong time or with your, with your car not settled, they're really going to throw you around. I've seen a lot of people, myself included, hit those bumps and end up spinning as they come out of the corners because it really upsets the car. So you've got to be aware of that. So I'm running in the 16 threes here. I'm running pretty good speed, uh, really pretty good lap times and I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing. So let's, let's hop in the car. We'll back up a couple of laps. We'll start here at lap 18. Let's hop in the car and um, I'll walk you through South Boston. I'm going to back up just a little bit here. Uh, so we're coming to take the, the uh, say the checkered flag or the, the green flag for our first lap and I'm going to show you what I do. And I'm going to do this kind of in slow motion. Um, right here, I start my turn in as the checkered, as the start finish line disappears through my driver's side window. When that line disappears, I'm beginning to turn in. You can see that here if we back this up. I start my turn in really just as the start finish line begins to go underneath uh, the hood of my car. So when I can see the start finish line going under the hood of my car, I'm beginning my turn in. Um, I'm turning in pretty tightly and being fairly aggressive until I get to the apex of the corner. I'm off the throttle, and we're not going to worry about throttle yet. I'm letting the car roll as I come into the corner here. And as it starts to slide up just a little bit, uh, I'm back on the throttle already coming out, and I'm turning back out of the corner with the idea of coming right back up to the yellow line, or to the wall. Now you can see the bump uh, coming out of turn two here. You can see it. It's right in here. And if you're not careful, it's really easy to get the car upset and to spin around. So let's watch this full speed coming out. You'll see the bump. There's the bump. And you can see the car really banging around in that rough spot coming out of turn number two. Now down the back straightaway. My turn in point here is this Strutmasters sign. And I start my turn in just as the Strutmasters um, begins to go past my right side A pillar. So when the S hits my A pillar, I'm starting my turn in. By the time Strut Masters has disappeared, I'm fully engaged with the corner. So we can see this in slow motion. I'm turning in tightly now, and I'm, my goal is to get two wheels right down on that yellow line. So right down on the yellow line, start to roll back into the throttle, back out onto the front straightaway, up against the wall. So the line here is fairly straightforward. Up against the wall, start your turn in about the time the start finish line goes under the nose of your car. Turn down until you can get two wheels right on the yellow line. I pushed up there, so this is going to be a slower lap. Turn four, start your turn in as the strut master sign disappears. Get right down two wheels on that yellow line. I got two under there, and you can see how it upset the car. And rinse and repeat. So let's back this up a little bit. That was a 16.44. We can tell that was going to be a slower lap. And we can see it here um, because I get two wheels just below the yellow line. And two wheels below the yellow line can really upset the car. You can see I'm a little bit low as I come out of four. And you can see the car wiggle. What about throttle? 
Uh, throttle, I drive in fairly deep into the corners. I'm a fairly aggressive with the throttle, but I don't use any brake. So my laps at South Boston use absolutely zero brake. I don't touch the brakes if I don't have to. That may be a mistake, but it seems to work for me, and it seems to be pretty quick. So I'm on the throttle until I'm fully engaged in the corner. When I have my wheel turned about as far left as I'm going to turn it, and about as far left is having my zero indicator over here to the left edge of my tack, by then I'm off the throttle. So you can see I'm off the throttle just as my steering wheel gets turned even with the tack. This is instinct for me. It's muscle memory now. I'm not watching the steering wheel to see that I've turned a certain amount. I can feel that my car is fully engaged and that's when I'm off the throttle. And I stay off the throttle until the car is settled here in the middle of the corner. Um, I don't really have a good mark for when I get back on the throttle here in turns one and two but I can tell you that you can feel the car settle in and you roll back into the throttle. You can see here as I'm getting on the throttle, and I'll back it up just a little bit, um, I'm not using the throttle like a light switch. So this isn't um, off the gas and then mash it flat. This is off the gas and then roll into the throttle. Rolling into the throttle is critical uh, for to take care of your tires. So I'm going to roll into the throttle here, and I want to be pretty much fully on the throttle by the time the NASCAR sign here disappears out of my view. That's one thing that I do kind of notice. If I'm not on the throttle by the time the NASCAR sign is starting to disappear, I'm going to have a slower lap. And that's going to change, of course, as my tires wear. I'm going to be getting off the throttle sooner and getting on it later. But this is early in a run. I've got four laps on fresh tires. This should be right at the peak of speed for the Legends car here at South Boston. So I'm going to come out of two onto the back straightaway. I've got the throttle matted. Again, I'm holding onto the throttle pretty tightly here. I start to let off um, the same thing. Just as just as I get into the corner um, here, when the when the wheel is fully engaged, you can see it again. I'm off the throttle just as I'm sort of fully into my turn. I let the car roll to the apex of the corner. Now here I do have a mark. I want to be picking the throttle up just as I get to this white line. I do have a mark in turn number three and four and I want to be fully on the throttle by the time I get to this line right up here. If I'm picking up the throttle just as I get to this line and I've got the throttle completely engaged by the time I get to this line, if I can do that and stay on the yellow line here, I'm going to have a good lap. A little loose coming out. Still ran a 16.339, so that's a very, very quick lap. Let's back this up a little bit. Um, you know, there is one other thing that I watch for in this corner. When this, in turn number one, when the, the lane dividing lines here, when these white dashes that divide the racing lane start to show up, that's a pretty good indicator of when to be off the throttle. I totally forgot about that. It just It's muscle memory to the point where I've forgotten that that was one of my first marks. So when I come into the corner, I'm driving in, I want to be off the throttle about the time this mark disappears under the nose of the car. Roll back into the throttle in the middle of the corner, being fully engaged by the time the NASCAR sign comes up, out into the corner, off the throttle, rolling back on just as that white line shows up, fully engaged by the time we get to the second line, back around to start finish line. So that's a 16.365 again, another pretty quick lap. Let's watch this from the chase cam. You can see how close I'm getting to the wall. Right down on the yellow line. You really don't want to go under it. You get two wheels under the yellow line. And I think it changes. Uh, I think it really it unloads the, the, the spring, the left rear spring, and I think that tends to want to put your car around. So right up against the wall, uh, coming out, then right down onto the yellow line in the apex, then up against the wall down the front straightaway. A couple things to be aware of. One, South Boston changes shape just a little bit. We can see it right here. Um, see that line right there? That's where the wall's actually coming in, and I feel like the lane's narrow a little bit. It's really easy to tag the wall here. You can see a lot of people have done it, and that, uh, if you're lucky, it only upsets the car, but what happens more often is it tends to you tag the wall, and you tend to get turned into the inside wall as well, uh, and that's bad for you and for everybody racing with you. So you have to be a little careful there, uh, but right up against the outside wall, and again, two wheels down onto the yellow line, and then back out onto the straightaway. Kind of see the same thing here, only not as sharp with the change in the shape of the wall, uh, but it's very easy to tag the wall at South Boston. Let's crawl in and 
We'll run a couple of laps from the cockpit. And I'm going to go ahead, you know what, let's go ahead and turn the driving line off so you can see this with the driving line off, see what this looks like. And then I think we'll be done at South Boston. So we're going to come out of three and four. There's a little bump coming out of three and four as well. You can see it's right there, up against the wall, off the throttle. We'll turn in and off the throttle, right down onto the apex of the corner, rolling into the throttle. Now, off as we are in and off the throttle, we're going to be wanting to roll back onto the throttle as we see the first white line, then the second back out up against the wall to run a full lap. So we're turning in as we get to the start finish line. We're off the throttle just as we start to see that first lane divider mark. We're turning in at the strut master on the throttle with the first mark on the left fully engaged by that second line across the racetrack. We've run several 16.3s in a row now. So we've got a pretty quick race car at South Boston. That's what it looks like to go around South Boston Speedway and to try to be fast doing it. A uh, couple of other maybe quick tips and pointers. Uh, one, these cars really like low tire pressures. Um, my tire pressures on this setup, I, they are 10 pounds on the left and 13 pounds on the right. Sometimes I run 14 on the right, depending on weather conditions. Now, the second thing is the cars are really tire sensitive. Um, when I qualify, I scrub the tires, but when I'm getting ready for a race, if you watch me in a race setup, I don't scrub the tires. I feel as though scrubbing the tires may heat them up and may make things better for the first two or three laps. But I believe I've observed maybe a five hundredths of a second drop off at the end of a race, lap after lap, and that I don't see when I don't scrub the tires. So I don't scrub the tires, I don't swerve back and forth on those first two pace laps. Uh, the third thing, and this is, this is a thing that I use in the Legends cars at South Boston, but you, you know, you're, you're welcome to build your own setup. My left front spring is the stiffest spring on the car. I feel like that tends to plant the left front. And in my experience, when my left front spring is the stiffest spring, my car tends to turn better through the corners. Um, it's really easy to get loose enough at South Boston that you have a hard time controlling the car and I feel like that stiff left front spring helps. Uh, those are my tips and tricks for South Boston. That's how you run a fast lap at South Boston. That's the, uh, the line that I run when I race here. I hope you find it helpful. If you do, please give us a like and a share. Subscribe to our channel. We're trying to do everything we can to help you guys go fast and to be stable because it's a lot more fun when you're racing with other guys that are quick and whose cars are stable that hold a good line. It's easier to pass a guy that's not all over the track, and it's easier to race door-to-door -door with somebody. That's the funnest racing is when you're door-to-door -door and nose-to-nose -nose, uh, as you come across the start-finish line. Uh, for the Johnson I Racing team on the Johnson I Racing Network, this is Aaron Johnson saying, go fast, turn left, have fun.